I'm Michael Green with Monterey State Historic Park. Welcome to Casa Soberanas. You're going to see a typical Mexican adobe in many respects, but it's one that has its own characteristics as well. Architecturally, it's a classic. It's got two floors, cantilevered balcony, and at one time, over on this side, it had an exterior staircase, and that was how you accessed the second floor. It was built in 1842 by Don Rafael Estrada. He and his wife Concepcion moved in that very same year, and this custom house official, just a young man, raised a family here with nine children. Many of them were born in this house. Over the decades, this house was changed for various occupants. As time went on, lots of modifications took place, but the house was built to last. You're gonna see that when we get inside. So let's take a look. We're in a space right now that was probably one of six small bedrooms in the house, but you can see it's been modified into a stairwell and an entryway. Back in the Mexican era, the floors of this house probably would have been packed earth instead of the tile floor you see here. This was all part of a loving restoration that was done by Ruben and Jean Serrano in the 1920s. But let me take you into the sala and talk about what happened then. Watch your step and your head. So in looking at the construction of the house, especially here, you can see the window casements. Good example of the way this house was put together in a very sturdy fashion. The walls are over three feet thick, and they're done that way to help uh, sustain the, the house, of course, uh, against the weather and the elements, but also to support a second floor, which has a cantilevered balcony. But look at the way the window casements are flared out to let in the maximum amount of light. And probably originally there were no glass windows here, but only the wooden shutters to keep out the weather. And it was heated by a fireplace. Well, today you see an eclectic collection of furnishings that go all the way from the 1840s into the modern era, to the 1950s and beyond. And this is really the taste of the last occupant of this house, Mrs. Mayo Hayes O'Donnell. She and her husband, Bill, moved in in 1941. And they collected from all over the world. Mrs. O'Donnell was kind of a local celebrity here. She was a writer for the local newspaper and she had lots of friends in the art world who came to visit her. And many of the paintings you see in this room were gifts. One of my favorites is this volcano scene by Jules Tavernier. He was a, a person who specialized in painting Hawaiian volcanoes, especially at night. And another notable piece that you might find interesting uh, this one by Mary Evelyn McCormick. It's called Portrait of a Chinese Boy. It's a lovely watercolor, perfectly executed, and notable because this particular artist rarely painted portraits. She was mostly known for painting Monterey adobes. As you look around the room, you also see Chinese furniture in pieces, like this Chinese trunk against the wall near the fireplace. Now, it sounds strange to say this today, but in the Mexican era, California's trade with China was actually less expensive and closer than it would have been to trade with the United States. Now, Mexico did trade with Western Europe countries and the US, but it was far less dangerous to go across the Pacific than to go around the Horn of South America to trade with the Americans. Now, I was very fortunate enough to take members of Mayo Hazel O'Donnell's family, her descendants, through this house. Her older niece who had children of her own remarked that when she was here visiting her aunt as a young girl she remembered things arranged just as we see them today and that's really part of our job here in california state parks to preserve a portion of history for you to enjoy mrs o'donnell as i said was a writer for the paper and her niece said the only thing missing from the house that i can see is the sound of my aunt's typewriter clicking away in her office let's go in that office now Again, watch your head. So this probably in the Mexican era would have been another bedroom. It has its own separate entrance and a collection of, again of Mrs. O'Donnell's paintings. 
Now the artwork you see on the walls really represent a wide range of styles and artists. Uh, and you can see that, you know, there were some pretty notable pieces. Helen Bruton's woodcut, this ranch scene here. She studied in a house that is today known as Robert Louis Stevenson House, when Armin Hansen used to conduct um, art lessons there, and he gathered with other painters. And another of my favorites is right over here, behind you. This was done by Lionel Barrymore. It's a very small pen and ink, a scene of the harbor. Now, we know that Lionel Barrymore studied with, studied with Armin Hansen in the Steven, what is now the Stevenson House. And those of you who might remember that name were probably old classic film fans because Lionel Barrymore was an actor in some early Hollywood productions. And, but most people who come here recognize his famous granddaughter more than the grandfather. And that, of course, was Drew Barrymore, who is still acting today. Behind me are pictures of various people who stayed in the house over time. Here's Raphael and Concepcion Estrada, who built the house and were the first to live in it. And then selling it to their cousin, Ezekiel Soberanus Sr. and Ezekiel Soberanus Jr., who inherited the house. And over time, uh, they allowed it to deteriorate to a certain degree. And so it wasn't long before they sold it to Ruben and Jean Serrano. And they lovingly restored the building to the appearance uh, that we see today. And then Mayo Hayes O'Donnell began renting the house in 1941. Now she was important to the preservation of this house. As a writer for the local newspaper, she could champion the cause of historic preservation for many of Monterey's downtown adobes. I like to take you upstairs. As I said, there were at one time six small rooms like this in the house. But now, upstairs, where there were four, there are only two. And that change was made by the Serrano family. Let's go up and take a look. And this is where we better watch our heads here. Now putting in this kind of staircase that wasn't part of the original building was a little bit tricky. It has a very sharp turn to the left, so mind your step and stay to the right. And so what was once a small bedroom was actually becomes kind of a landing or entry point for the remainder of the second floor. You can see it had its own private entrance. This was a pretty clever design because each of the four rooms that used to exist up here during the Mexican period had, were separated by walls and each had their own private entrance that was only approached from an exterior staircase. That when the exterior staircase was taken out, then the Serrano family put in this interior staircase. That leads to that room that used to be two, but became one big master bedroom. Watch out, this is low. So we're in a room that was actually divided in two. And you can see there are two exterior doors to this room. There was a wall that separated and you would have had two smaller rooms. But in the 1920s, that modification really came into play. You can see that now we have really ample space upstairs for a pretty good sized bedroom. The thing that's most striking about this, in my view, is a painting that was done of this room in the 1920s. So you can see the bed, it's there, same bed. The furnishing is arranged in much the same way as it was when this wonderful painting was made of the room we're in. If Mrs. O'Donnell was having guests, they would have used the smaller room to this side. I have to get down low. So really, it's quite a comfortable house. It has a really good sized master bedroom and an adjoining guest room, the way it was reconfigured. Nice light, again, a good collection of uh, artifacts that she collected over time. And I was kind of amused by the little kind of local touch in this room. Now, of all the things you see, wonderful lithographs, you see that Mrs. O'Donnell was Catholic. We have um, some um, religious items here in the room as well. But here's a little local touch. 
It's a plate from an old market here that was part of a 1950s promotion to encourage Monterey tourism. And it was issued by Lucky Boy Markets. And it shows some of the significant buildings in Monterey that remain in the 20th and 21st century. Well, going downstairs, you have to see the additions that were made. Behind me was the original exterior wall of the building on the west side. But when the Serranos came in, and in the later years, uh, new modern occupants made drastic changes to the back side, breaking through the back exterior wall to add a dining room and a kitchen. And that's where we're going now. And here's something that I can point out in almost every Mexican adobe downtown. And that is the number of things that you'll find that came from China. And it really makes sense when you think about it, because in the early trading days of Monterey, it was very difficult and dangerous to sail to the United States. You had to go around the horn of, the of South America into Boston or beyond into England, where a lot of trading uh, took place but it was a lot easier and faster and closer to get to China. It sounds strange to say that California was closer to China than it was to the United States during the Mexican period. That was true. So Chinese trade began in the 1830s and we still have a trading relationship with China today. But here is the evidence I'm referring to. Here is a 1820s hand painted Chinese plate. And of course, the process is painstaking. They use a very fine glaze and very delicate handwork to create the scene here that uh, is often referred to as real old willow or old blue willow. But here is another one. It looks similar in style, but it's much later. What was happening was that these Chinese plates became so popular in the United States that England and American uh, companies, ceramic companies, began to manufacture their copies and they would use a technique called transfer wear. So the paintings were done before firing and then transferred on to the plate, almost like a decal, and then fired in an oven. These also became very popular in the United States. In fact, in American diners during the Great Depression, you might have heard about the Blue Plate Special. It was probably served on a plate like this. So, this whole space, an enclosed porch, not only gave room for a dining room, but you also had a pretty cool kitchen. So this kitchen kind of reminds me of my grandmother's kitchen. It's 1940s style uh, with a modern linoleum floor and an ice box. This is how you kept your food cold. You waited for a delivery of ice and a nice little sideboard, very country kitchen style. And the Wedgwood, which was originally a wood stove that had been modified to uh, burn gas. So these were all really, you know, modern luxuries for the time. Um, the kitchen, of course, also was kind of a family gathering spot. So you would have a small kitchen table here. And this little piece of furniture over here is something you don't see very often. It's called a pie safe. So you see it has the tin designed with piercing. Uh, that's to let air in and as pie safe uh, to keep the pies away from the insects. So this is a real 1940s country kitchen style piece of furniture. So you can see that the house was built to last, as I said earlier, and it lasted through generations. It lasted through the uh, Estrada family, two generations of Soberanis and the Ruben and Jean Serrano era where they did a loving restoration of this building. And then ultimately Mayo Hayes O'Donnell the staff writer on the Monterey Herald newspaper who lived in here until it, she finally donated it to California State Parks in 1977. It's been a lot of fun being with you today. Only a couple more things to show you right outside in Mayo Hazel O'Donnell's garden. So in Ms. O'Donnell's garden, um, we see that she was somebody who really loved to garden, as most of us do. Um, over the years, um, she had pictures of herself taking gardening here, and you can tell it was a point of relaxation for her. Today, it's open to anybody who wants to come in and have lunch. Um, in fact, all the historic gardens in downtown uh, Monterey State Historic Park are open for people to come in and enjoy the peace and serenity of the setting. So for now, 
All I need to do is thank you very much for being with us here on this tour and have safe travels. Mm -hmm.